Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along. Also happy to be joined this afternoon by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, and the Medical Officer of Health at the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. Also to the media who are in attendance this afternoon, welcome and we do invite you to ask your questions. There are already several in queue. If you would like to submit a question, just click on the text bubble with the question mark in it here on Microsoft Teams. And when you do, if you could indicate your name as well as your media outlet. And who your question is for. And finally, a welcome to those tuning in this afternoon on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel. Listeners on Global News Radio 980 CFPL and those who are watching on the CTV London website. Let's get to our opening remarks and we'll start with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thanks, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. So like all Londoners, uh, I'm eagerly anticipating our move into step three of the provincial government's reopening plan tomorrow. Among other things, we'll once again be able to enjoy indoor dining at our favorite restaurants, access to gyms and health clubs, movie theaters and museums. Look, we've been in step two now since June 30th, and at that time, we were still seeing around 200 cases a day across Ontario. More than two weeks later, as we prepare to enter the next phase, those case counts have dropped by around 25%. I suspect those numbers, along with other key metrics, will continue to improve even further as we move into step three, and it's largely a result of one thing, and one thing only, vaccines. Ending this pandemic is no longer a hope or a dream, it's now a choice. And the choice is, will you get your shot or not? As of right now, it's really that simple and that straightforward. No more excuses. We have so much vaccine that you don't even need to book appointments uh, to get your first dose. You can walk into any of our mass vaccination clinics today and get your shot. For the vast majority who have been or are willing to be vaccinated, as I've said before, our job isn't over yet. We and our families are protected, but those, uh, that are not can still overrun our healthcare system if and when they get sick. And I'll remind us that uh, all the COVID cases that we hear about in London, almost every one of them has not been vaccinated or in a very small minority have had only a single shot. It's our collective responsibility to reach out to those who are reluctant or hesitant, speak with them, be thoughtful and compassionate about how and why vaccines are safe and why it's so important. So lastly, after almost 18 months in operation, the Oak Ridge Assessment Center will officially close for good as of tomorrow. You'll remember that this was the first assessment center anywhere in our city when it opened in March of last year. That seems like a long time ago. At the time, there was so much we didn't know about this virus and about what we were up against and how we'd get ourselves out of this situation. I'm sure the staff at Oak Ridge were just as uncertain, perhaps even as scared as everyone else, but even still, they turned out every day, ensuring those with symptoms were tested not only quickly and efficiently, but compassionately and with kindness. I know I speak on behalf of all Londoners when I say we soon won't forget their heroic and selfless efforts to be at that site for nearly 18 months. And I wanted to recognize their contributions today and from my heart say thank you. And to the residents of Oak Ridge and the residents of Carlene Heights, uh, thank you. Thanks for giving up these important facilities for a greater good. I know in speaking with Councillor Steve Lehman from Ward 8 at Oak Ridge and Councillor Jesse Helmer from Ward 4 uh, in Carling Heights, they and all of Council are really appreciative of the residents uh, for the sacrifices that they have made. And they also, like me, appreciate those heroic and selfless efforts of those people who were so involved in providing us with those tests. So again, from all of us, we say thank you and remind us all again, getting your shot is now a choice. Thanks very much. Over to you, Dr. Mackey, please. Well, thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we, we did have nine cases yesterday. Unfortunately, we had another death and I do want to take a moment to talk about that. This was an individual in her 80s uh, not associated with a long-term care retirement home and somebody who had had a dose of the vaccine, but not two doses. We really are in a two dose campaign right now. You're not fully vaccinated until you've got that second dose. 
and said uh, this case is just un another unfortunate example of how important it is for people to make sure that they finish that two dose series. Uh, the Delta variant is uh, very much present and driving cases in our community. We know you do require that second dose for full protection. So uh, lots of clinic capacity available over the next few weeks. If you haven't booked that second dose, please do so. Uh, we had uh, about 6,900 vaccines delivered through our mass clinics and partners yesterday, another great day. Uh, last uh, Earlier this week, we hit 74.35 on Tuesday. Uh, we, we actually had, uh, that's still actually off our record of 7,900 in a single day uh, from the 30th of June. So that campaign continues on at full tilt and, uh, and we've got space to add more people to the vaccine campaign. Uh, Dan, I know we've got lots of questions. Happy to uh, pause there and take any. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder. Yes, we do have uh, some questions, so let's get to those right away. Jennifer Beeman from the London Free Press is first in line today. And Dr. Mackey, Jennifer is asking with entering step three tomorrow, what is your advice for fully vaccinated people? Can they gather indoors, gather in large groups, meet up with people from other households? Yeah, I mean, they, they legally can now. I'd say this is a situation where, you know, the opportunity is there, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. If you're gathering in large groups, uh, you know, uh, it's hard to ensure that everyone's going to be vaccinated. Uh, you know, you don't, we don't have a passport system in place at this point. We know the gathering indoors remains a driver of spread. Uh, and so, yes, if you've got to do something indoors with people, uh, then that is a possibility now, but really still encouraging people to keep it outdoors as much as possible. Thank you very much. And a follow-up question from Jennifer. Uh, Dr. Mackey, how many of the cases reported yesterday and today were unvaccinated if we have that information? And when the, will the health unit consider posting the vaccination status of its cases on the dashboard? At this point, we're doing that on a sort of a report basis where we'll look back at, at the previous couple of weeks and look at the, the rate of people among cases who have been vaccinated and those that haven't. Uh, we are seeing a, a small handful of uh, COVID cases in people that are vaccinated. Vast majority, over 90%, continue to be in the unvaccinated population. Uh, we're not tracking that day to day, but we can certainly ask the epidemiology team to look at how feasible that would be. Thank you, Dr. Mackey, Mayor Holder. Yeah, thanks. I'd, li I'd like to add to that if I can, please. And that is, I think it would be really helpful if, if I might encourage the media that as we have this information available in terms of, um, of COVID case counts and deaths to note uh, uh, the numbers associated with being vaccinated or not, as Dr. Mackey has clearly indicated, we have well in excess of 90% uh, of the COVID cases where they have not been vaccinated. And what we're trying to do is educate people. This is this is not a game. This is one where we're, that this is an absolutely serious health issue and the, and the potential impact by not being vaccinated is so significant that from from our standpoint, we would uh, we would encourage uh, a media to report on that because I think what is important is that people know that by not being vaccinated, you put yourself and you put others at risk, and that is too significant to ignore. Wanted to add those comments and thanks to the media and thanks to you, Dan and Dr. Mackey. Thank you, Mayor Holder. Let's go to uh, the next question. Uh, another one from Jennifer Beeman, Dr. Mackey. Uh, how much of a danger does the step three reopening pose for unvaccinated people? Yeah, if you're unvaccinated right now, you know, you're among a population where we are seeing a significant wave of COVID. The rate of, uh, of COVID in the unvaccinated population is something like 10 times higher than in the vaccinated population, maybe even higher than that. Uh, we are seeing a significant wave through the unvaccinated population. People remain at risk if they're not vaccinated. The other thing is we know that some people uh, have limited immune responses because of medications or other illness. That means that even if they're vaccinated, they're at some risk. And that's why it's so important for the rest of us who can get vaccinated to do so to really stem the tide of this pandemic. Thank you. And I think we've got one more from Jennifer. Um, 
I know, Dr. Mackey, you mentioned how many people were vaccinated in all of the clinics yesterday. Uh, Jennifer is asking, do we know what the turnout was at yesterday's mass vaccination clinic? Yeah, we do. And uh, we don't always get our daily bulletin in time for the media briefings, but today we do. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and share the screen there, Dan, because we've got a bunch of data that are relevant to that question. So uh, are you seeing the vaccine inventory and dashboard today? We are, yeah, and Angela has just switched over to it. Okay, super. So uh, you can see at Agriplex 2654, at Mount Bridges, uh, about 590 vaccines, North London 1317, Earl Nichols 1500. Uh, this is, I believe, what you're referring to here, the mobile team, and this was at White Oaks Public School. Huge turnout there. This was fantastic. It's actually uh, to get 420 people through a mobile team is a major effort. So big credit to that team and to that community. Thanks so much, everyone who came out there. Other community partners would include family doctors and the Middlesex London Paramedic Service. Uh, so that's where our total of 6,900 vaccines from yesterday. Uh, the, the 511 you see here is administered through our clinics. It doesn't include the pharmacy. So we know the total in the region as of, uh, as of Monday was 575,000 doses administered to people in this region. Uh, and then you can see, you know, the other part of that, whoops, the other part of the slide here is the inventory. We've got about 23,000 of both Pfizer and Moderna in the freezers at ready to go for those, those appointments over the next few weeks. Hopefully that is helpful. I was gonna say some great information there. And again, that number for one day just under 7,000 doses, that's uh, that's getting up there. And again, even with the 575,000 doses delivered through all um, opportunities so far in the pandemic, still, still the need, if you have not been vaccinated, if you have not got your second dose of vaccine, book that appointment, walk into one of the mass vaccination or pop-up clinics. And if you are waiting for that second dose, don't wait any longer. If you're eligible, if it's been 28 days since your first shot, get that second dose as soon as you are able. I'm going to step down off the soapbox there for a second. All right, let's go to the next question. Jacqueline LaBelle is joining us from Global News Radio 980 CFPL. Dr. Mackey, uh, what is the status of the outbreak associated with Christ Embassy Church? Is it still ongoing? How many cases are involved? Yes, Jacqueline, the uh, outbreak at Christ Embassy Church is still on the books just because we haven't had enough time elapse. Uh, there haven't been any new cases since I think maybe uh, day two or three. We're still at six total cases at that outbreak. Thank you very much. Uh, Follow-up question from Jacqueline LaBelle, Dr. Mackey. When it comes to COVID-19 cases over the past four weeks or so, which age groups are most represented in the cases? Yeah, so we, we're we still seeing a fairly wide distribution of age right now. Um, the, you know, mortality continues to be among those that are in the uh, the older age groups, and especially those that are unvaccinated or single dose vaccinated. Uh, in terms of cases, though, we're seeing them in all age groups at the moment. Thank you, Dr. Mackey. And I just want to say, as we only have a couple of questions left in the queue, to the media in attendance, if you have been waiting to submit a question, now would be the time to get it in, as we only have a couple of more before we wrap up. And uh, if you are, if you've got a follow-up question or a first question, please do submit those. There is a bit of a delay here in Teams, so we will watch, but uh, that is your uh, two-question warning. The next one comes to us from Travis Dolany at CBC London. Dr. Mackey, this one is for you. Uh, Dr. Mackey, we're seeing a national fitness gym, Good Life, with many locations in London, say they are not planning to require staff or members to be vaccinated to enter their facilities. Will this increase the risk of transmitting COVID-19? And would you advise gyms to require people be vaccinated? I think a lot of employers are looking at this issue right now. Uh, I think it's a reasonable expectation of clients and fellow staff people that the staff in those facilities be vaccinated. Uh, whether it's uh, an issue of requiring, making it mandatory for staff or members is a, at this point, it's a decision individual to those facilities. Uh, we haven't seen any, you know, federal, provincial 
uh, direction to make that mandatory. And at this point, with the strong uptake we're seeing at a voluntary, on a voluntary basis, uh, and really minimal activity or outbreaks in the community, uh, we're not seeing a local justification to make things mandatory either. But uh, it's certainly something that I think employers should be doing everything possible to facilitate their employees to get vaccinated, encouraging them. And, you know, workplace uh, workplace pop-up clinics are certainly something we'll be considering as we move into the fall as well. You know, at the moment, doing some geographic outreach to different uh, neighborhoods that have seen lower uptake. Uh, all neighborhoods, by the way, are seeing great uptake, 60% or more. Uh, but in, in neighborhoods that have seen relatively low uptake, we're getting out there into the community centers, into the public schools, uh, and uh, and employers, Middlesex London Paramedic Service has done some on-site with some of the larger employers. Uh, so that'll be part of our campaign. At this, at this point, I think it's appropriate to get as many people vaccinated voluntarily as we can. Uh, there may come a time when uh, mandatory vaccine is absolutely necessary. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey. And we're going to go to what is our last question this afternoon. And it's uh, a follow-up from Jennifer Beeman at the Free Press. Dr. Mackey, do we know how this latest death contracted COVID? Was it a household contact or was it associated with an outbreak? Uh, Dr. There, we, Dr. Mackey, you're on mute. There you go. Yeah, thanks. I, I don't have that information at this point, Jennifer. All right. Well, that does do it for our questions this afternoon. Uh, thank you again for joining us uh, for this virtual media briefing. We appreciate also Dr. Mackey, Mayor Holder, your input, your comments, and your thoughts as we continue to uh, respond to this global COVID-19 pandemic. Well, that does it for us. We will be back with our next virtual media briefing Monday afternoon at 2 p.m. So thank you for joining us. We hope you will join us again. And until Monday, so long for now.